Hi, my name is Autumn Dixon, and this week is April 25th through May 1st. Now, this week's readings, we are going to be in Exodus, and we have entered into the days of the Law of Moses. Now, the Law of Moses was a set of rules that were given to the Israelites to help them remain loyal to God. They were restricting in a lot of ways. They were very specific rules, but they were gifts given to the Israelites. So the Israelites had just recently come out of slavery, out of a land that was worshiping all sorts of idols. And they needed that extra support because their testimony of the Savior was still very limited. And so this Law of Moses was a gift. Now, the Law of Moses was also really intense <laughs> in some parts, right? And just to give you a little bit of an example, this is Exodus chapter 31, and it is verses 14 through 15. And it says, Ye shall keep the Sabbath day therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So, like I said, very intense. The law of Moses is intense. Breaking the Sabbath day could be a capital offense. You could be put to death for breaking the Sabbath day. Now, I feel like in modern times, we would cringe to think about a theocracy, a nation in our day, being willing to kill people for breaking the Sabbath day, right? That seems really harsh. It seems really, just to say the word again, intense. How can this be right? Like, how could this be a commandment of our Heavenly Father? Now, there is a commentary in the Old Testament Institute Manual that helped me work through this just a little bit. So the commentary essentially says that the law of Moses is to be understood, understood through the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, when I think of that statement that we can look at all of these aspects of the law of Moses and if we have a testimony of Jesus Christ, it can make sense. And not just the symbolism, right? There's lots of symbolism in the law of Moses, blood and lambs and all these different things, lots of symbolism, but stepping past that, a testimony of Jesus Christ, knowing his character, who he is, what he teaches, can help us understand the less friendly portions of the Law of Moses, such as capital punishment for the Sabbath day. So let's look at that specifically. I want to look at, I want to explore this capital punishment for the Sabbath day, and then I want to take the principles from that and I want to apply it to our day. So Sabbath day. Let's look at a couple, let's look at it through the testimony of Christ. And how do we do that? We do that by looking at the truths he taught. So a couple of truths. Eternity is a very long time. And no matter when you die, <laughs> mortality is a very short time. Death is nothing more than a doorway, right? Your existence, who you are, your personality, it just continues it just keeps going <laughs> after you die, right? It is nothing more than a doorway. It is also not the worst thing that can happen to you. There is a spirit world where repentance and healing and changing and progression can still continue to happen. And the atonement of Jesus Christ can help any pain or any suffering, any unfairness or wrongdoing or sin, the atonement of Jesus Christ can heal that. It has immense power to heal. So those are just a few principles that we can look at to apply to this law of Moses, this part of the law of Moses, to better understand it. Now the Lord never promised that life would be fair in mortality. That was never part of the deal when we agreed to come here. <laughs> That was never on his to-do list. Life was not going to be fair in mortality. That's just how it was going to be. 
But one thing that we do know about him, one thing he has promised, one thing that we can have a testimony of regarding his character is that all of his choices will revolve around helping us return to him. That will always be his bottom line. He wants us to return to live with him. The things that occur in between are can be speed bumps or mountains that we can climb and become better. The end goal is returning to live with him. And everything that he does is to help his people, to help all of us return to him, but also to help individuals return to him. So when we look at the house of Israel, we can see how absolutely crucial they were to the plan of salvation. The house of Israel, <laughs> the house of Israel literally set the stage for Christ to come and perform the atonement, to be crucified. The house of Israel was so important, not only in Christ's time, but in the latter days, they play a huge role. The Lord could not afford to lose the house of Israel. He needed, they were really spiritually immature. They had a long way to go. They knew very little about him or had testimonies of very little about him. It was very hard for them to understand him as their God. And so they needed they needed this extra support, these really strong rules to help them stay loyal to him. They were a people who were very easy to lose. And so this law of Moses, it literally was a support to help them stay in line, right? Death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. It's losing your relationship with the Savior, not being able to return to live with him. That is the worst thing that can happen to you. And the law of Moses was a gift to help people not get lost. Now, I always, there's a piece of me that kind of shies away from teaching that because it can seem really cold, right? <laughs> Especially when you don't have a testimony of Christ. It can seem really cold, the idea of, well, death's not that big of a deal when you compare it to eternity. However, it only seems cold if you don't have a testimony of Christ, right? That's why this commentary in the Law of Moses was so powerful that the law of Moses is to be understood through a testimony of Christ. If you truly believe in Christ and what he is saying, the law of Moses can be understood. If you don't have a testimony of Christ, if you don't have a testimony that death isn't that bad, that it's nothing more than a doorway, if you don't have a testimony of the fact that repentance can continue on after we die, if you don't have these testimonies, it can be very difficult to swallow the idea of execution being a punishment for breaking the Sabbath day. Now, I want to take this just a, just a step further, right? The Israelites were never, let's say an Israelite did actually, I guess, break the Sabbath day and was executed. That Israelite is not lost to the Lord. That Israelite is not unloved. They will only be separated from their physical bodies for a very short period of time. It's very temporary that they're going to be separated from, from their bodies, right? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, all of us are going to be resurrected. That Israelite if they incurred that death penalty, will be taken care of. Nobody, no Israelite, even with this strict punishment with the Sabbath day, no one, no Israelite is dispensable or superfluous. The Lord influences great, great groups of people like the house of Israel. They were an essential part of his plan, but he doesn't actually sacrifice individuals in his movement of great groups of people. The law of Moses was put in place to protect these people and to help them stay loyal. And the people who got off the path and may have been executed, they were not lost either. They were not forgotten. In fact, in some ways, they might have been more blessed being able to go to the other side and to be able to continue to repent and receive a stronger testimony. Any pain, any pain that was experienced was also experienced by the Savior. So 
it can seem very severe that the Savior would say this is going to be the punishment for the law of Moses or for breaking the Sabbath day as part of the law of Moses. But we also have to understand that the Savior was willing to go through all of that pain as well, was willing to go through that punishment essentially, right? So the punishment for the Sabbath day was extremely severe and this, the Savior made it that way so that he could protect his people. But he was also willing to experience the severity of those punishments. The Savior during his atonement experienced every death, every loss, every fear, every pain, every suffering, every embarrassment. He suffered all of it, right? When we normally think of a God who is willing to execute people like that, we we see a disregard for human life. Like, why would you want to worship someone like that? But that is not the Savior that I know. The Savior that I know and believe in went to great lengths to protect the Israelites to protect the house of Israel and make sure that they were able to stay loyal to him. But he also was willing to personally experience those great lengths. When he laid out the law of Moses and the accompanying punishments, not only did he see what some of the Israelites might have to go through because of those punishments, but he knew what he would have to go through when he laid out that law of Moses, but he still chose it because all of his choices revolve around helping us return to him. He knew that some of them would fail and that there would be pain associated with that. And he was going to experience that pain too. He wasn't selfish looking down on his mountain saying, I'm willing to sacrifice you for the rest of everybody else because he didn't have to sacrifice any, everyone. He could continue to help those Israelites on the other side of the veil. And he was willing to go through what they were going through. Once again, there's a small part of me that sometimes shies away from wanting to teach this because it is so incomprehensible to someone who doesn't have a testimony of the loving savior that I have a testimony of. I feel like a majority of the world would have a difficult time with this, I, this portion of the law of Moses. It is only through a testimony of Jesus Christ that the law of Moses can be seen in perspective and understood and I guess, be appreciated. I believe in a savior who knows what he's doing. I know that I don't have to be afraid for my brothers and sisters because I know that they are in his hands still. So we've talked about the law of Moses and, and the Sabbath day. I wanna bring it forward to our modern day and to apply this same principle, this idea of sometimes the Savior asking really difficult things of us. This world is extremely, extremely unfair. That is ex that's very easy to see, right? In fact, I was talking to one of my friends recently who was previously an atheist and she converted to Christianity. And one of her big hangups before she converted was she was like, you believe in an omnipotent God who allows deep suffering of these children that he supposedly loves. Like, how do you explain that? And she was able to come to a testimony that the Savior does it for us, that he wanted us to grow so that we could experience the a fullness of happiness, right? But this is a step further. This isn't just about Christ allowing suffering. This is about Christ asking things that can cause suffering. So for example, I think of a spouse who is being asked to attend the temple. Even though their family may not look like, like that celestial family that they were looking for. They, maybe the spouse feels like that ideal is out of reach for them and the temple has become very painful for them, but they're still being asked to go to the temple. 
I think of the gay teenager who has been taught about marriage and eternal families from the time that they were born. And I think about how they may wonder, well, where do I fit into this plan? How can I experience happiness? Will I ever be able to have a celestial marriage that is satisfying to me, that is wonderful and full of love? And will I ever have that happy ending that other people have? I think of the abused child who is being asked to forgive an unrepentant parent. When we're talking about this principle, this idea of Christ asking a really difficult thing that can cause pain. So, for example, ex being executed for breaking the Sabbath day and all of these other things that I just talked about in our modern day. How can Christ command something so cruel? How can he, if he's so wonderful and loving, how can he ask something that's so hard. If he really loves us, why would he do that? I don't have an answer for every individual circumstance. Partially because I don't know every single circumstance and partially because I look back at my life and I have been immensely blessed. I know that there are pains out there that I can't even begin, I, I can't fathom them. But I know of a Savior who does. I know of a Savior who asks us to walk through these hard things, to continue to do these hard things in order to remain close to Him. But I also know of a Savior who walks through it with us. I know of a Savior who waits, waits with us, waits through times where we don't understand. I know of a Savior who aches with us, who wonders what's going to happen with us, who worries and hopes and becomes disappointed with us, <laughs> disappointed alongside us. I believe in his atonement and its ability to heal, and I teach that not to invalidate the pain, the very real pain and suffering that some of my brothers and sisters are going through, I teach it because I believe it. I believe that it can heal everyone. I believe that coming to know the Savior can give us the greatest amount of happiness that we can pretend, that we can ever experience in our eternity of existence. However, it doesn't matter what I believe. <laughs> My testimony of the Savior will not heal whatever you're going through. It's impossible. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you have to find a testimony yourself. You have to come to know the Savior yourself. And I feel like it is so important to emphasize the idea that finding the testimony of who Christ really is is not easy. Because all of us have been given these concepts of Christ since the time we were young. But we have to remember that some of these concepts are coming from imperfect people. And not all of them are perfect or accurate. And so as we grow older... And as we come to find a testimony of the tools that we have been given by the Savior to draw closer to Him, we, as we take advantage of those tools, we have to walk with Christ. We can't rely on someone, someone else's testimony. It will never be enough because it's imperfect people who are sometimes, sometimes going to get it wrong about Christ. <laughs> we have to walk with Christ on our own, and He will help us discern which concepts we've been taught are overemphasized or incorrect or not serving us. We have to come to know him on our own, and it's not easy. But I promise you that as you come to know him as he is, you will not be disappointed. You will be healed. You will be able to look at these things that are being asked of you, and you will feel peace. There will be times when you'll still feel aching and pain, but you will feel 
your Savior with you as you feel that. I testify that as you come to know him as he is, you will even be able to look forward to the future with happiness, knowing that goodness is coming your way. I know that the law of Moses and life in general can only truly be understood through a testimony of Jesus Christ. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.